Okay. Uh, believe it or not, Rob was taking forever playing with the presentation, trying to turn it into an interactive PDF. So we're taking a break from that, and we're going to give my way a shot, which is um, crack open a 40, <laughs> play the presentation, and say the first thing that comes into our head. So this is kind of a run-through of uh, our, our first stab at biomimicry. We're going to take a look at a, a couple biological systems and how they address uh, issues with water and see if we can apply those to some uh, architectural situations. Hank, you should be a um, radio DJ. Yeah. I think you would uh, fit in just fine there. This is a pine cone that is open. It's dead, so it opens up when it's dead instead of alive. This is a pine clone that's kind of uh, brought back from the dead, you could say. Kind of. No, not, not really. Like um, a zombie pine, kind of like... Um, no, it's not back from the dead. It's still dead. It's reanimated? No, it's okay. just, it's just a, a force of nature. It's a... It's a it is no, it's, phenomenon. It is a phenomenon. Here's a diagram of the phenomenon. So you can see here that the uh, pine cone petals actually have uh, a kind of a cross grain structure where uh, through the center of the pine cone you have the grain, the kind of woody grain running lengthwise in a direction that doesn't really expand when it absorbs moisture. But the, uh, the on the underside of the petal, the cross grain, um, when that absorbs moisture, it, it kind of uh, it swells up to kind of uh, close the pine cone, keep it closed rather when it's alive. Yeah. And then when it dies... And dries out the uh, the grain shrinks in that direction, and the pine cone opens up so it can uh, it can release its pollen and seed. Now here's our vision of kind of basically what could happen. Um, this this is kind of a, a roof that takes that that pine cone notion, and um, it's kind of it's got little uh, roof shingles that lift up and and kind of let the breeze through, maybe let some sun in, and then swell back down when they get rained down on. So. This this right here is a um, some kind of diagram showing how that this relates to the pine cone concept, how it uses the same cross grain structure to swell the roof shut when it gets rained on. So when it when the top gets wet, the uh, the top layer kind of expands, swells, and flattens that shingle out. Here's a um, feather. Everyone loves feathers. Some people do. Most people. Look no. at that though. The water droplets is beautiful. This is, um, so this is an even zoom, more zoomed in view of a feather. No water on that feather. No, but you can see it's kind of got, it's got, uh, fibers in the fibers. It's, it's a bit of an inception kind of feather thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hear about the movie? <laughs> it's late. So this is, this is a little guy that has feathers, um, he is puffed up and good. Mm -hmm. Um, here's another guy out in the cold. Do you take these pictures? This is a diagram of one of those little guys turning into a puffball. So, um, you can see that the uh, the the birds have these feathers that they create a water kind of a water resistant barrier. Yeah. Um, and they can flatten those down to kind of keep to kind of what is it doing? To kind of yeah. That's, <laughs> where are you going? Why do they know the old? They flatten it down to crush the under layer of feathers to kind of collapse the air pockets in the down feathers that are closer to their body. Which one are you talking about? Right, I was now? on the left. Yeah, that's how they. Um, that's how they let their body heat escape. Turn into bird sickles keep, overnight. Keep. <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible word. This next diagram here, it kind of it's it's kind of a theoretical take on where this could go. We're looking at kind of a wall system that could take advantage of those. Um, Puffing in and out. That puffing in and out with the insulation. I, you don't want to look slide. at that sliding. I like your basket weave kind of graphic. That's good. Here's the point. Here's Expanding the point. So like yeah, bird. why don't we why don't we take this kind of this this from the bird and we use it for our own system, kind of an insulation that can collapse or expand so that it can let out it can kind of let out if it's heat it needs to, if it needs to, or puff up to really maximize insulative value. When possible, so here's a system that would kind of um, have a compressible insulation that could flex in and out over the course of the year. Okay, here's here's our next biology. 
Uh, this is a picture of my hand uh, before I stuck it in a bowl of water and left it there for half an hour so Rob could videotape my fingers wrinkling. This is a picture of not your hand. Because yeah, and after I put my hand, didn't wrinkle that quickly. Okay, here's a diagram showing what's going on, why they're wrinkling. So basically, what happens is your skin, this upper layer of your skin with all those dead cells, it's absorbing water, and when it absorbs, it swells up. And this this is happening all over your body, but on your fingertips and and I think the toes of your tips of your toes too, right? Underneath that top layer is attached more tightly uh, to your body so that it, it can't uh, flex or stretch as much. So what happens is when it swells, it kind of buckles like a, like a wooden floor. The theory know? is that its evolution is that it's causing, uh, it's, it's doing it to provide, maintain traction. Great. Well, yeah. So when you're, your hand, when you're wet, when you're wet, you can hold on to things. Letting things like dinner slip out of yeah. your hands. Back when you used to hunt salmon with like bears. <laughs> Can we hunt salmon with bears? This this next this is probably the best the best rendering of the bunch. It's an image of kind of concrete and then kind of concrete kind is wrinkly. Of concrete. But so what's happening here is when the floor gets wet it wrinkles up like our fingers and provides traction. So if you've got an environment like um you know, at a factory or at a shopping mall or something like that and there's a spill the floor responds by itself to kind of um, to make it a safe situation, so you don't have to wait for someone like I to come with a mop or something. Okay, so here's here's a diagram showing what we we're kind of anticipating. So maybe you take a traditional a traditional floor system, wood, concrete, whatever that is, and, and you're able to apply this film over the top, some kind of film that's really absorptive, but stuck nice and solid down to uh, the concrete, the wood, whatever. And when you spill on it. It soaks up this moisture, and it has nowhere to go but to buckle up and wrinkle and provide some grip, yeah. And maybe, hopefully, in the process, protect the material. I thought there was, there was some interesting stuff going on there, and uh, we're going to follow up on one of them and hopefully get some more, uh, some more out of it.